What is up everybody? Welcome back to another Lesser Athletes video. Today it's your boy Guido on the mic and today I want to talk about my favorite team, the Miami Heat. Now if you guys don't know already, the Heat got eliminated in 5 games by the Boston Celtics and it kind of looks like a repetitive cycle Once uh, nowadays with the Heat. Um, it's just Jimmy and Bam, Tyler Hero, you get a point guard. And then someone gets injured, and then the season goes... Uh, it just collapses. That's pretty much what happens every season, it feels like. Um, except 2021, truthfully. That's like the only year that the Heat just weren't better. They just got swept by the Bucks. But either way, today I want to talk about the Miami Heat. What they need to do this offseason to go back to a championship team. You got to be a little more bold. The Heat, I've been kind of thinking about the future too much. And then it hasn't paid off, and it resulted in injuries, and yeah. To start off, I'm going to talk about um, our stars, Jimmy and Bam. <clears throat> if you guys don't know already, there's been a lot of rumors about the Heat trading Jimmy Butler. And um, people have been trying to stir up the beef between Pat Riley and Jimmy Butler. Pat Riley calling Jimmy, like, um, he's telling him to keep his mouth shut during the playoffs or whatever if he's not playing. I don't think he'd trade him. <laughs> trading Jimmy, I said, no, there's no way it can happen. He's carried this franchise too much, and... Without him, it feels like the Heat are, are almost like... They lose their ad identity without Jimmy Butler. It's like... We saw that in the Celtics series. Like, they just... The offense was not clicking at all. The ball was moving as well. Less defense, obviously. But Eric Spolstra found a way to win the game against the Celtics, which is crazy to me. <laughs> and um, that's just Eric Spolstra. That's just the magic he does. He's, he's one of the greatest all-time coaches in the history of the game. But point is, I think you keep Jimmy Butler. You don't trade him. That's like one of the weirdest moves that he could do. You don't trade Jimmy Butler. You, you should extend him to a short-term contract, I feel like. That's what it says here for me. In my opinion, it's because I don't think you should commit to him long-term. Because as much as I love Butler, he's getting kind of old. He's going to turn 35 by next season. And that's one of the biggest problems. Like, if he was, like, 29, 30, easily give him that four-year deal, five-year deal. But that's not him anymore. He's not, he's not that young as he used to be when he first signed with the Heat. He's 35. He's about to slow it down maybe a little bit. That's why you can sign him to like a one or two year deal, I feel like, and it's completely fine. Um, you do have to get Jimmy um, convinced to play more games, though. Because as you guys saw in 2022, the Heat were the first seed in the in the Eastern Conference, and that almost led them to a finals run. Like, it was, so, it was one shot away, potentially, from a finals run. And I feel like home court advantage is really important in the playoffs. It's like one of the biggest things, having your, the crowd with your side. It's like, some teams rely on that to win playoff games, and it's just crazy. And the fact that he are a more experienced team too, it, it it just allows them to win more road games in general. And I don't know, I feel like um also focusing on like the regular season is more important, of course, because we saw the Heat fell in the play in the last two seasons and resulted in two pretty bad injuries. The first season, uh, the twenty twenty three, the miraculous finals run, it was good, but then Tyler Hero broke his hand. It wasn't the play-in, but still, my point is, like, try to find a way to play less games in total. Tyler Hero broke his hand in the first game of the Bucks, or no, yeah, it was the game one of the Bucks series in 2023, and then Jimmy sprained his MCL in the 2024 playing game, and that was it for our season. We couldn't win the finals, and we couldn't get into the second round. You just gotta, you, you gotta lock the playoff spot already. Get get more rest as soon as the regular season ends. Don't try to play in the play-in. There's no point of playing in the play-in. It's like... It's just like it's just a fake playoff, literally. It's like, the way I see it. Yes, it's entertaining, but find a way to avoid that. You don't need to play in the play-in. Lock yourself in the playoffs. Get some rest. Get a game plan. I think you just need to find a way to avoid the play-in. But it also um it also involves keeping Bam as your second or first option. As we saw already, Bam has improved his three-point shot. Maybe not to um a satisfactory level, but at least he's shooting them now. He, he's getting more confidence shooting about one or two a game now. I think if Bam keeps developing his three point shot, the he could be re a really really good player, like borderline superstar. But it's gonna take time, obviously. It's not gonna be right away. Bam needs to keep shooting the ball. He needs to get more confidence, um, and just be consistent with their shot. Um, Bam is really good. He's it was the only offense that he had in the playoffs this season against Celtics. But um, yeah, I think. To just have Jimmy commit to more play, more regular season games, win more regular season, and stop trying to reserve so much for the playoffs when you can't even like 
guarantee a spot in the playoffs. You know what I mean? Like, you got to just win more games in the regular season, lock that playoff spot, and boom, go rest after that. It's like, come on. That's what he got to do. Next up, I think you got to look for a third star. Now, Jimmy and Bam, great. Like, that's a great one-two punch. But I feel like that third star hasn't really been there. Um, yes, I love Tyler Hero. Yes, he's a great player. Um, he can be really explosive at times. He can be... Uh, he can catch fire out of nowhere. Just make like five three straight in a row. But the problem is his consistency. That's his main problem Tyler with Tyler Hero. Good player. But I'm not sure if you can rely on him as a third star. That's why I think you should... Well, the first thing is... Please, Miami Heat, get some get some more size in the at the five because that can be a problem sometimes against against teams like the Wolves or the Celtics, and I don't really want to face those problems and against Jokic especially in the Nuggets in the finals. We saw that we had Cody Zeller guarding him, and I was like, bro, come on, like. Um, but also trying to try to find a way to balance that, like upgrade your your um your front court, but also try to keep your depth. At the same time, the Heat should explore the trade market with Caleb. Tyler Hero, Haywood Hyde Smith, and Duncan Robinson. I don't think you need that many pieces in a rotation. If anything, combine them to get an upgrade, right? It just makes sense to me, I feel like. And, um, I don't know. It feels like, uh, at times, uh, the Heat li- like that star power at the end of the games. And it's like Jimmy can't do everything, right? They, they might just double Jimmy or double Bam, and it, it's, it's, that's it. They have no third guy there. I do think Terry Rozier was a great pickup, honestly, for what we what we got him for. The Kyle Lowry in a in a protected first. That was a really good deal for us. And he's like he's a really good starting point guard. Like I don't get me wrong, but I feel like you need a third like star, you know what I mean? Like all star. Um I feel like Pat Riley hasn't been as bold lately with um his offseason moves and his trade moves. Um I know he tried to chase um Victor Oladipo and Kyle Lowry, right? Like as our third star, but you know, they both got injured, and that's it. It's about, well, not Kyle Lowry, more like Oladipo. Oladipo just had unlucky injuries, and I just feel bad for him because I feel like if he was healthy and never got those many knee injuries, maybe he could have been good. But regardless, I think the point is that the point I'm trying to make is chase a third proven star. And that's what I'm going to say here. Um, the only problem is you have to trade one of your young guys. You got to trade either Nikola Jovic or Jaime Hawkins, most likely, if you want that third star. Um... Try to keep one of them. If you keep one of them, that's a good rookie to develop. With either one, I'm happy. I'd probably prefer to keep Jovic because Jovic is like more of our need. He's like our our starting four now, right now. Hawkes is like a like a backup to Jimmy. So I would say probably trade Hawkes. Even though I love Hawkes, he's a great player. But if you're trying to get, win a championship, you gotta do what you gotta do. Now some potential targets in the off season. Uh, I'm not saying these are all realistic, but there are some possibilities that some of these players are available. The first player, Donovan Mitchell. If the Cavaliers lose again in the playoffs, like before even getting the conference finals, I think he tries to ask out because he just sees that Cleveland isn't in a spot where he can win a championship. Um, as much as uh, as great as Cleveland's um, team is in general, and they have a good coaching staff. Um, I'm not sure they can get to over the hump, over the Celtics, over the Knicks, over the Bucks, over the Heat, over like. I'm not sure they're they just lack veteran presence. I feel like sometimes and they're a really good team. Don't get me wrong, they're a good young team. Mobley's gonna develop into a star one day. I'm sure Garland's good. Um, they got Jared Allen at the five. It's a really good team. Uh, you have good bench too. It's just like I'm not sure if Mitchell can carry that squad all the time. And as you see in the playoffs, sometimes they lack consistency. They just don't shoot the ball that well. So that's why I think Mitchell might ask out eventually. If the Cavs just lose again. And he's like, I don't think I can win here. He might ask out. Because I thought... um, Well, those rumors like around two years ago where uh, Mitchell was going to get traded to the Heat. Him and Bam were like linking up. And it was like rumors and stuff. And I think he wanted to play with Bam. Like everyone loves Bam. Like Dame loves Bam too, but... Problem is like the the Heat aren't aren't as, as as aggressive anymore. That's a problem. Like they lack the the aggressive like f- um championship like hunger that they used to have. Um, but um, yeah. Next up, Kevin Durant. I think it's a little less realistic because I don't think the Suns would trade Kevin Durant, and um, they might want to try to find a way to retool the team. I think they're probably gonna trade Bradley Beal and the Suns. That's that's, that's like the first step because. Bradley Beal kind of fell off a little bit um, from what he what he was on Washington. 
And I don't know. You gotta find a replacement for Bradley Beal. You gotta find more depth. I feel like I think they traded for too many top heavy guys that play isolation ball. Uh, next up to Jonte Murray. Now I think Dejounte's a little more realistic than Kevin Durant because the Hawks, <laughs> at the time of this recording, they got the first overall pick in the draft, and I'm like, what? So my thought process on that is, why would they try to contend, like rebuild? No, like trade away Trey and Dejounte and just completely reset the, the franchise, just rebuild. That's why I think Dejounte's kind of realistic. Team with Sadiq Bay, two Hawks guys. I think they're pretty realistic. Sadiq Bay's a really good um three uh, three and D player. You can try to get. Really good shooter. Um, the only problem is he's coming off a torn ACL, so it might be a little problematic. But the Heat, um, the Heat turned um, like unknown players. He's not unknown. He's a known player. But you know what I mean. The the point is he he turned any player re- into a really good system, and that's what the Heat need. Um, more forwards. I feel like sometimes. Uh, I think he's re-signed Delon Wright in the playoffs. He proved that he can be a really good piece, and especially like. Um, and like for example, if the Heat like need Rozier or um Hero Her- to rest, put put in Delon right. He, he played really good minutes. He played really good defense. He made some knockdown threes that are really important to win game two. I think he proved that he deserves like another contract, maybe like a one or two year deal. We signed Delon right. I think it's a good piece to add back. Uh, maybe KCP. He is a free agent coming up, but he might resign with the Nuggets. Uh, THC is another possibility. Same with Derek Jones. Just a lot of defensive guys. I feel like they can maybe. Put a spark off our bench. But um, I think the point I'm trying to make is I think the Heat needs to be more aggressive. Um, get that third star locked in. Um, I think Mitchell is probably the best target you're going to get in this offseason. If you find a way to get him, get him. Literally give up the, the the roster for him. I think he's worth it. He is a superstar. And I would love to have him on the Heat. But we will see what the Heat do this offseason. Uh, I think the whole thing um, I'm trying to say in this video is that he just need to be more aggressive. But also be smart with the contracts. Resign Jimmy to a short-term deal. Um, keep Bam. Maybe explore the trade market with a hero. Um, and your young guys. And see what we can get. Um, but regardless, I think the Heat are still um, on the verge of contending. They just need one more piece and push them over the hump. And that's it. But um, anyway, thank you guys for watching. That's it for this video. Um, I just want to recap what the Heat season should be like. And... Um, Things happened in the past that I think that he needs to do better. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more videos coming up. Adios and goodbye.